Hello everyone, welcome to another video. And this one's going to be on finding the intrinsic value of a stock. If we take Apple for example, its newest closing price as of January 15, 2021 was $127.41. Now this is what is known as the market price of the stock. It is not the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value of a stock is a fundamental number that is generated based on the expectation of future cash flows discounted to today's price. Now, I've done a video on net present value, which is somewhat related to this concept, concept of intrinsic value. And I'll link that in the description below. The intrinsic value captures the value of the stock in today's price based on what the expected cash flow for that company is. So what would be the expected future cash flow? Of course, the future has not happened yet, so we don't know what the future cash flow is. And the best way to approximate that is to look at historic free cash flow. If we look at this table that I've generated here, this line in the middle represents the present or today. And negative one here means last year, negative two is two years ago, three years ago, and four years ago. Similarly, one here is next year, two years from now, three years now, four years from now. And we'll get to this concept of terminal value a little bit later on in the video. What we need to do now is find out what the historic free cash flow for Apple has been. And we can easily find that out from Yahoo Finance. If we go into Yahoo Finance and type in the ticker for Apple, it will give us a lot of information about the stock. And one of the tabs that we see is called financials. And if we click on that, we can look at its income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. And under cash flow, we have this line called the free cash flow, where we can now copy over the latest free cash flow data over the past four years, which is where I got these numbers. And note these are in thousands of dollars. That's why this is 70, almost $74 billion, $59 billion, $64 billion, and $50.8 billion. So over the past four years, Apple has generated around 60 to 70 billion dollars in, in, in free cash flow. Now what we need to do is populate these cells here where we approximate what our expectation of the future free cash flow for Apple is. And then that will serve as a proxy for us to calculate the intrinsic value of the stock today by discounting these future free cash flows to today's price using some required rate of return. This is also where this analysis gets its name. This approach is called the discounted cash flow model, and that is because we are discounting the future free cash flows to today's price to calculate a fair value, and then we can divide that by the number of shares outstanding to calculate an intrinsic value of that stock. If the market price then drops below that intrinsic value, it would be a signal for us to buy. And if the market price is far above that fair value, then it may be an indication that the stock is overpriced. So what can we do to populate these cells? Now, there are several ways you can go about doing this. You could individually put in what your expected future cash flow numbers are. Now, what I'm going to do is perhaps a little bit overly simplistic. I'm going to assume that Apple is a relatively large company that's not going to be able to grow its free cash flow at a very significant rate. And my rate that I'm going to assume in the rear, near term is going to be 3%. That is, I'm going to take this latest free cash flow number from Apple and then increase it by 3% year over year for four years. Now, after that time frame, it doesn't really make sense to keep discounting the future every single year in perpetuity because I'm going to assume that Apple is going to stay in business for a long time. It makes more sense to give Apple's future free cash flow a terminal value that takes into account all of its future free cash flow. And then we can discount that to today's price in terms of a fair value. Before we discuss what the formula for this terminal value is, we need to understand two more rates of return. The first one is the required rate. Now the required rate is sort of a personal rate of return that you desire. It's dependent on your risk tolerance, your investment time horizon, as well as your expect expectation of future returns. There is a quantitative way to come up with this number 
which is called the Working Average Cost of Capital, or WACC, and we will discuss that in a future video. However, for the purpose of this discussion, we are going to assume this number to be around 7%. The other number is the perpetual growth rate. Now, the perpetual growth rate is the rate at which we expect Apple to grow its future cash flow indefinitely. This number generally is pretty small, around 2%, and that's because the GDP of any nation or any developed nation is usually around 2 to 3%. It doesn't make sense to give Apple a perpetual growth rate that is greater than the GDP of a developed nation. Therefore, the number I like to go with is around 2%. And that is because if that number is very large, let's say 4 or 5%, there will be a time in the future where Apple will be larger than the economy that it operates in. Therefore, the number that I like to go with is around 2%. Now, before we proceed any further, we need to discuss the formulas for discounting the future cash flows as well as for the terminal value. And those are shown here. The discounted value today of some future cash flow is that future cash flow number divided by 1 plus the required rate raised to the power of that time. So in year two, whatever free cash flow number we have, we're going to divide that by one plus the required rate raised to the power of two. And the terminal value is the most recent future cash flow, which here is the previous year's cash flow, times one plus the perpetual rate divided by the difference of the required rate and the perpetual rate. And this will give us the lump sum amount that accounts for all future cash flows beyond year four and then we will discount that value back to today's price using the discounting formula and these are the numbers that we find note that from years one through four we used a future cash flow growth rate of three percent on our most previous free cash flow number and for the terminal value we again use the most recent free cash flow number and the required rates and the perpetual rates now all we have to do is take each one of these numbers of years 1 through 4 and then the terminal value and discount that back to today using our discounted value formula, sum them up, divided by the number of shares, and that would give us our fair value. Once we discount each one of these values over years 1 through 4 to today's value, these are the numbers that we get. Note how these numbers are smaller than the future cash flow corresponding to the same time frame. And that is because the money in the future is worth less to us today. And we perform the same calculation for the terminal value. And again, we find that that number is smaller. Now, all we have to do is take each one of these future cash flows, sum them up, divided by the total number of shares, and that would give us the fair value of Apple shares today. And once we perform the summation and the division, we find that Apple's fair value today is about $84. However, the market price is about $127. That means we can expect Apple shares to be overvalued given current market conditions. Now that we have calculated this fair value, we can apply a margin of safety. The margin of safety assumes that we want our share price to fall let's say 10% below this $84 value for us, to be, for us to swoop in and buy Apple shares. It is important to always consider that this fair intrinsic value calculation has a lot of assumptions going into it. For instance, the required rate, the perpetual rate, and the free cash flow growth rate are all assumptions. Small changes in these numbers can have a big impact on our calculated fair intrinsic value. Therefore, it is always important to consider a margin of safety that's below your calculation of fair value, just to give you a little bit of cushion in, in case something does go south. There is a really good YouTube video explaining the discounted cash flow model in far more detail than here from Jimmy from Learn to Invest, and I will link that video in the descriptions below. However, the goal of this video is to show you how to write this script to do this calculation in Python. And for the future of this channel, that's going to be very important as we are going to use this discounted cash flow model to make stock predictions as well as observe general trends in the market. And Python is an extremely powerful tool to use because it allows us to fetch the most recent and up-to-date data directly from the internet and then manipulate it. Now let's hop over to Python and go over how we can write the script to do these calculations for us.
Okay, we are in Python now. I went ahead and typed in a little bit of code early on just to speed things along. What I did was I imported the Y Finance package as YF and then I downloaded Apple's information from Yahoo Finance and stored it in this variable called Apple. And I retrieved the number of outstanding shares and stored it in this variable called outstanding shares. I also wrote down the assumptions of my required rate at 7% perpetual rate at 2%, and my cash flow growth rate at 3%. We are going to be looking at years 1, 2, 3, and 4, both in the past and the future. So the years variable explicitly states the number of years we're looking at. I also typed in the historical free cash flow numbers directly from Yahoo Finance and note that these are in 1000s, so this is about 74 billion 58 billion, 64 billion, and 50 billion. And I created these empty lists of variables that we are going to need shortly. One is the future cash flow, one is the discount factor that we will use to discount the future cash flows back to today's value, and then store it in this variable called the discounted future free cash flow. Now we can start by calculating the terminal value of Apple stock based on the information and the assumptions that we have. So we can go ahead and do something like this. The terminal value is equal to the free cash flow and the negative one here means that go ahead and grab the latest or the newest free cash flow number times one plus the perpetual rate divided by the required rate minus the perpetual rate. And we can print the terminal value. And see what that looks like. And here we go. That's the terminal value. Now remember, we still have to discount this using our discount factors, which is what we will calculate next. To calculate the discounted future cash flows, we can use a for loop. And that for loop will iterate over each one of the future years and use a discount factor to calculate the discounted future cash flow. And we can do that in the following way. For year in years, the cash flow for that year is equal to the free cash flow that we have of the most recent year, which in this case is about 74 billion, times 1 plus the cash flow growth rate to the power of year. And now we can add this to our future free cash flow variable that we declared earlier. And while we are at it, we can also calculate the discount factor that we will use to discount this future free cash flow to today's value. And there we go. That's our discount factor. Note that the discount factor is just the denominator in our discounted value equation. That's because we will take our calculated future free cash flows, divide that by the discount factor, to get our discounted cash flow. Now we can go ahead and print out our discount factor and our future free cash flows to see what they look like. There we are. Those are our discount factors for each one of the four years. And these are our future free cash flows calculated at a 3% growth rate. Now all we have to do is take each one of our future free cash flows and divide that by the corresponding discount factor. And again, we can do that in a for loop. That can look something like this. For i in range 0 to length years, so for each one of the years, the discounted future free cash flow is equal to the future free cash flow divided by the discount factor. And then we can print out the discounted future free cash flow, which is the parameter that we've been after the whole time. There we go. These are our discount factors, these are our future free cash flows, and then these are our discounted 
future free cash flows valued to today's price. Now we just have a couple more steps left to finish up our intrinsic value calculation for Apple. What we have to do now is calculate the discounted terminal value and then sum up all of the discounted values together and then divide that by the number of shares outstanding. And that would give us our fair value per share for Apple. Let's go ahead and do that. What we can say is this. The discounted terminal value is equal to the terminal value divided by the, the required rate raised to the power 4 because the terminal value is calculated at the end of year 4. Note that this number here is the discount factor at year 4 and we use the same discount factor for both year 4 and the terminal value. What we will do now is add this to our list of discounted values. There. The discounted terminal value is now added to our discounted values. Now we can calculate today's value of all of the discounted future cash flows by summing them. Once we have today's value, all we have to do now is divide by the number of shares. And that would be fair value is equal to today's value times 1000 because remember all of our values were in thousands of dollars divided by the outstanding shares. And now all there is left for us to do is print out the value. And we are going to round this to two decimal places. Now let's check this out. There we go. The fair value of Apple is about $84. Just as we had said earlier, it was about $84. Now, one very important point about this calculation is that it is very sensitive to the assumptions that you make. For example, if we scroll back up here and change the required rate to 8% and recalculate the fair value, we find that it is about $70. Now that is a really big difference from about $84 just by changing the required rate by 1%. Therefore, it is extremely important to understand how sensitive your calculations are to your inputs when you are calculating the fair value or the intrinsic value. It is also equally important to define a margin of safety. For example, if you find that the fair value of Apple share is about $100, you should aim to purchase it maybe at $90 or $85, just to give yourself a little bit of a cushion in case something bad does happen. It is also important to play around with some of these other parameters to find out how sensitive this intrinsic value calculation is to your inputs. With that being said, the discounted cash flow model is probably one of the simplest and easiest to understand valuation strategies that are out there, and I'm a big fan of it. What this allows you to do is give you intuition behind what the price of a stock should be versus what the market is saying it is. This kind of calculation also helps calibrate your expectations about when to buy and sell stocks. I hope you guys found this video very helpful and that you'll be able to use the same approach and the same code to make your own calculations about the fair value of stocks. If you liked and enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by either dropping a like or subscribing. Thank you, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.